Still hello, low on the hello, track, swear where it's at. Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. I, I, uh, I really didn't. <clears throat> Let me clear my throat just a minute here. I, I didn't plan on this being. I, I plan on giving the, the racing world a day to to calm down. I plan on, obviously, Friday night, we had the gravel Kofoy deal. We had, uh, a, 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 you know, in the even Saturday night, you know, we had the situation where Super Mario Brothered, if you ain't seen it, go watch the, the Facebook, Long Live the Chaz, TikToks, all this. The, the Super Mario Brothered McFadden from Sweet, which Sweet Driver Error overcorrected, I think, not intentional. We had Brady Bacon win. We had Callum Williamson debut Friday night. Everybody was giving me a bunch of shit. Callum Williamson's a bum. You need to tell him that he, he's deported. Deport his ass out of the country. I had people blowing my phone up. I don't even want to show you the text. I had to defend. I was basically all day today. I was defending Callum Williamson. Luckily, he went out there tonight, finished sixth at, at, at Sellins Grove. Did very well for himself. So Callum Williamson, hey. We got your back, no matter how badass of a wheelie you pulled at Lincoln. And even though I suggested to the Callum Williamson group after Lincoln that we should cut his foot in half, and and, and that might help the situation, he still went out there and performed very well at, at, at Sullen's Grove. We had all these things. I wanted to talk about it, but I was like, oh, I'll, you know, I'll break out the guitar. You know, I'll play a damn a tune or two. We'll play some. You know, we'll just, we'll just, we'll, I was just sitting here chilling. Having a damn good old day. And then. And then. Everybody's already seen it. Everybody's already seen it. It's been removed at this point and responded to. And hopefully that's for the good. But honestly. Just because of the embarrassment of the outcry. Was met with the embarrassment. Don't mean. That the validity. The validity of what was trying to be said um, doesn't hit home. We still should take what everyone saw on Facebook, what everyone saw across the interwebs. Hold on, we may have to uh, bring out the... Uh, the, the we, because it was it, this was removed at this point. Um, everything that, that we are talking about here today, I screen, I screen grabbed it as well. Obviously it's in the thumbnail. Um, Tyler Walker, let me see if I can bring this up for you guys. Hold on. Let's see here. We'll see if we can, uh, web capture this. Hold on. Let's see here. We can do images. Hold on. Uh, can we, can we do it? I don't know if we can hold on here. Oh. We, we, we got it in the screenshots here, unfortunately. You got Tyler Walker here, went live. You could see that halfway, I think. He went live in his car. That's pictures of him there. With a crack pipe and a woman in the, in the side seating area was in this video. So, like I said, I had all this stuff to talk about. But I was giving it a day. I had the guitar out. I was just having a great old day. And then the the nuclear bomb of Tyler Walker going live on Facebook in a front seat of a car, supposedly based on the images that I have, and I don't I mean I don't think I'm out of line saying this. We all saw Tyler Walker doing crack or or, or doing something out of a crack pipe out of his front seat of his car. And I just feel like maybe, hold on, hold on, hold on. We're still here. We're still here. I think maybe people need to realize, and maybe Tyler Walker needs to realize who he actually is. Hold on. We got stuff here. Look, we got some highlights for y'all to see of, of this of this amazing driver named Tyler Walker. This was Golden State Challenge 2009. Petaluma, Tyler Walker just absolutely waxing ass. They don't even show him in this clip because he's so damn far ahead. He's just whooping ass. We got Tyler Walker here. Victory Lane 2012 at Port Royal. 
The Port Royal Speedway, Tyler Walker. I don't know if you need to see this, but this is who you actually are, a fucking winner. You're not in that front seat. You're not discarded. You're not left to waste. This is Tyler Walker right here to the racing world. This is who you are. A winner. A fucking winner. You know, hell, I've even went to some, through some sadness here recently. I ain't went to this this level, but sometimes you got to realize who the fuck you are. You're a some bitch and winner. You're a driving son of a uh, bad to the bone. Tyler Walker, a winner. That's who this guy is. Here's some Antioch Golden State Challenge 24 car. Do people boo when Tyler Walker wins a race? No, they fucking throw their hands up in the air and cheer. They can't believe it. So happy he wins a race doing backflips into victory lane, not a crack pipe. And then, of course, who can forget the uh, ominous year? Kings Royal, final lap here. Sammy Swindell leading the field. That Sammy Swindell, 2011. Kings Royal here. We go off into the final fucking corner, and he blows his right rear. And God, you know who gave Tyler Walker that win right there? You know who blows that tire? It ain't Goodyear. It ain't Hoosier. It ain't this guy. It ain't that guy. When it comes down to that final lap, Tyler Walker, and you're running second, and you got the baddest son bitch to ever drive a sprint car out in front of you, known as Sammy motherfucking Swindell, and he goes into that final corner, and Sammy Swindell's tire goes flat at the opportunist to time. The man who makes that fucking tire go flat, it sure as hell, it sure as hell, uh, ain't 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 you? It ain't you. God didn't do this, or, 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 or you didn't do this. God is the reason this tire went flat right here. God is the reason. God gave you that victory. God gave you that win. Right there. Two th- sorry, I got a little emotional there. Clicked uh, a few too many buttons. But obviously this situation has got me a little fucking frustrated to see that guy right there, King's Royal Victor, Port Royal winner, West Coast Dominator, one of the baddest son of a bitches to ever strap behind the wheel of a race car, Tyler Walker, to see him in the front seat of a fucking car on a, on a, on some rolling glass with some broad next to him, no disrespect, but if she led him to that point, mm, disrespect may be needed. But maybe, maybe Tyler Walker needs to recognize who the fuck he actually is. He ain't some nobody. He ain't some nobody. He's one of the baddest son of a bitches to ever strap behind the wheel of a race car. Hell, even as fucked up as he is right now, if you put him in a sprint car one-on-one with the NASCAR boys, he'd wax every single one of them. I mean, Max Verstappen couldn't outrun him in a, in a car half cracked out. I mean, I'm just saying. That's just how good our dirt racers are. But anyway, this is Tyler Walker. This is the winner. This is a victor. Not the shit that everybody just saw on Facebook. We all just saw it. Nobody blinked an eye. Just because it was deleted doesn't mean it wasn't real. But this is Tyler Walker, and I think Tyler Walker needs to know that. Of course, the Keen Motorsports Team 17, I'm acting like it happened yesterday. But honestly, some of the things that happened yesterday aren't as important as this. Look at that busted lip, messed up in the car, didn't give a damn drive determination, will. Not just to survive, but to win, to thrive, to accomplish. You know, and maybe maybe this is an issue with the with the motorsports world. I talk about the nepotism, the monarchy, the the games, the politics. Maybe he experienced that a little bit. I don't, I'm don't. i not sure. I don't know the full story. I would love to have that full story. Hopefully, he, he will respond to my messages I've had in the past and present. He's watched the chats before. He appreciates what I'm saying. And Like I said, maybe he's experienced it a little bit. I'd love for him to come on here and endorse it and tell the world what his problem is. 
But it seems like he's got a little more uh, 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 bigger problems than the nepotism and the monarchy of the racing world than the politics of the racing world with what we saw tonight. Now, I'm only talking because I give a fuck. And of course, this is the crowning of the king right here. Crowning of the king, Tyler Walker. Right here. Maybe, maybe he needs to recognize what he is, a king of the dirt racing world. Maybe this is the problem. Some people get a crown, put it on their head, and forget where it laid. Mm. Mm-mm-mm. I really don't know what to say. I, like I said, this is, this is I, if people are upset at my live tonight, because I don't really have much to say after this. Although I do, I can ramble on. I need some callers. I need people to call in, actually, to discuss this situation. Maybe Tyler Walker himself will call in. He actually did have a response after, I, I guess, 10 minutes or an hour after. He, he woke up and, oh, wow, people care about me. But maybe we have a real big, first of all, we got a real big issue in the dirt racing world and the white community of letting other men know that we care about them. The only, you know, in our white community, we care about you when you're blonde with big titties. But when you're just a regular guy and you're having mental issues, this is why mental issues is such an issue in the white community because we don't give a fuck about you. Fuck you, figure it out. Bootstraps up, makes us strong, but also makes us fucking weak. Because we leave, we, we leave those fallen behind. We don't act like an army. So, after the uh, crack pipe video surfaced, the crack pipe video was taken down in the front seat of this car that he was in. And he came on here and replied 56 minutes ago. This all happened within the last two hours. And this is the message that he left the world. I will show everyone where I live and what Skid Row, which apparently that's where Tyler Walker was in this video. Skid fucking Row. I've actually walked down it because I've been in some extreme situations. A lot of you uh, plush ass bitches ain't been half in the extreme situations I've been in. Now, I wasn't doing no drugs when I was in this situation, but hey, I was like in, in a scenario like, hey, let's let's walk the plank. Hell, I called today walking pit row after I've come on here and talked some shit about a few drivers or some this or that. I call walking the pit row and I actually talked to some media members of the dirt racing world. They feel the same way. Walking the planks when you're running up and down pit road after you talk some shit on some racers. Y'all motherfucking y'all really ain't a bunch of nothing. Compared to the fucking dark alleys and, and, you know, shadows I've walked through. Y'all are a bunch of bitches. Fucking pull something out and gut me if you want. But here at the end of the day, this fucking skid row that he's talking about, I have been there actually walking with this guitar. Not this one, another one. I've walked this fucking skid row. It's possibly one of the worst places in the world. But he says that's where he's at, apparently, where he lives. This Tyler Walker's in fucking skid row. In Skid Row, I visited. I did not stay. That's not where I'm going to reside if I'm having to live out of the car playing music. I'm not staying there. I visited. It was like going to the jungle. We're doing a fucking safari. But apparently, Tyler Walker's living there. He says, Skid Row, DTLA, downtown LA, which is, it, that's, it's a sector. It's a street. It's like, he said, he'll show you what it's like tomorrow. The most violent place in the world. Thank you all for your support. You motivate me to make changes to better my life. I want my life back. As much, and this is the fucked up part, as much as you people... Some of you, I've got your DMs already. Oh, look at fucking Tyler. What a fucking junkie. Oh, look at this. Look at my, oh my God. As much as you fucking punk ass bitches want to sit there and chime in on Tyler Walker. And even myself, although I have reached out to Tyler Walker prior to this. For those of you 
who have not reached out to Tyler Walker prior to this, and most of you, that's the case, the people chastise and make fun of them, where the fuck were you in the pathway to where he's at right now? These people who could have made impactful changes in decisions and offerings, choices. You know, I think if Tyler Walker uh, gets to that video we all saw, Because he didn't have too many choices. You know? Some people are in desperate fucking ration. Out there. Just living day to day. You don't even have to know about it. And and the only reason you may be sympathetic now. The only reason you 193 son of a bitches are giving a fuck right now. Is because... Two hours prior to this post that was an hour ago, he was on there fucking smoking crack pipes in the front seat of a damn car with a busted front windshield. So without him getting to the point of desperation with no actual fucking choice, you wouldn't even know or care. Or care. This is what they're talking about. When they talk about ignoration to how people feel, check in on people. And I understand some of you, oh, I didn't know, I didn't know. Oh, where did, where did, you didn't know Tyler Walker was close to this point? Where the fuck's Tyler Walker been? I just showed you the videos. How you go from one of the greatest fucking drivers we've ever seen to off the map? Oh, we seen the TMZ video. Oh, we seen the, the, the police chase. Where has it been since then? Anybody care to figure it out? Anybody gave a fuck about Tyler Walker? Like I said, I've actually messaged. This is a problem. This is a problem. And when you see, let me tell you something, race and white little dick community. When you see Tyler Walker in the front seat of the fucking rate of a car with a crack pipe, you're responsible. You're responsible because when you had built, this motherfucker was the rat bag games number 10 car on the rat bag game of World of Outlaw 2002. He was pushed to the world. He was built as the next fucking thing by this community of the dirt racing world. And when you make somebody feel that fucking special and then you take them down to that fucking irrelevant, what do you think that's going to do to the psyche of a human being? Where do you think somebody's going to end up when they get to the top of the mountain and they get kicked to the fucking abyss? This is why I was trying to reach out to him. I think it was one, two years ago. Hey, man, what are you doing? Want to talk to them? Want to do a show? Let's, let's get you going again. Let's get you fucking riled up, happy, hyped up about yourself before you feel this way about yourself. And there's a lot of people in this dirt racing world, this fucking TikTok society that we are in. You're hot one minute, you ain't hot the next. That's why I joke about the dome in December. Your Tyler Carpenter's cool for a week, ignored the rest of the year. Who knows how that psyche goes? Fuck, hottest shit in the world for a week, and then now you're nobody. Who knows what that actually does? But this is an extreme example. And actually an extreme reality. Of what could happen. Of what can, and what is actually happening. When you are perceived as a fucking superstar-esque person. And then you're a nobody-esque person. And then you're discarded. You're rejected. You're pushed away from the society that built you onto the plateau that they placed you on. Now I get it. A lot of people are going to sit there and say, Oh, well, these are the choices Tyler made. Tyler did this. Tyler did that. We tried to help. We tried to do this. Okay, we get... Okay, how long ago was that shit? I talk about 2019 and me and going after PA and all this shit that, you know, when I was hot, 1920, like it happened yesterday. That's four fucking years ago. 
21 Bristol doing rap videos, opening the fucking show at, at the Dirt Bristol. That was 21. That was three. What you doing today? What's happening now? I'm just saying. Some of this stuff y'all may be judging Tyler Walker on happened a long time ago. And when you go from that long, long time ago to today, you might be shocked. Oh my God, that can happen? You may feel that out of reach, out of line, that shocked. Here, these people shocked. People are blown away right now at this. People are losing their fucking minds. What do you think happens in California? You know how much it costs to live there? I, I was joking about some people with it. Australia, you know. I just got back from my three-month month venture in Australia. Fucking coffee baristas are making $35 an hour. Servers at restaurant making $45, $50 an hour. No true financial stress over in Australia because everybody's making above a living wage. Over here in America... It don't matter if you want to work a job. You better work four or five or you're going to be in the depression. What do you think happens when your job and your livelihood is to be this fucking superstar, rock star, driver, kick-ass guy? What are you going to go do then? Then whatever you do, you got to make up here, make up there, or turn to a crack pipe and, and, and settle up the depression of the situation you are now within. I think that's why they don't have too many drug issues over in Australia because their lively, their, their, their fucking economics and their society is not based on financial depression. That's why they just like drinking really good beer, which I have neglected to Michelob tonight, by the way. I didn't go to Bush Light because, you know, you know, it's funny. I went to go get some beer tonight. Bush Light costs more than Michelob. How fucking dumb are you people? Bush Light used to be the white trash Keystone. 30 pack for 25 bucks. But ever since Kid Rock came out and told all the, the whiteies to not buy it, they bumped the price up on Bush Light. And it cost more than Michelob. It used to be the premium beer of Anheuser-Busch. And even though Kid Rock said fuck Bud Light and, and, and Anheuser-Busch, you missed the fucking last half of the sentence. What the fuck? I just don't understand the uh, abstrosity of, of mental capacities here sometimes. And what we are willing to accept and deal with. It's just so insane. And then you get, uh, once again, this scenario here is just a breakdown of misunderstandings, not understanding how things operate or work. It's like, oh my God, y'all people are surprised? Now, obviously, I'm a little shocked. I think everybody's a little shocked. But did I see this not coming? No, I mean, this is, this is expected when you, uh, you know, ostracize a person from your society. Back to the building up to the breaking down. The top of the mountain to the abyss. This is what happens in the abyss. You're down there in the abyss known as skid fucking row. Unbelievable. What are the fucking comments going on? Natural eyes, somebody said. I can't believe this. What are the fucking comments? I, 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 I. Yapping and yapping. Go take another hit and go to bed. Listen to me. Chaz is on the pipe. Chaz on God. Someone get this dude a number seven from McDonald's. That's sad. Tyler had a lot more fun than I did. A lot more chicks. And I'm supposed to be responsible for his welfare. Would Tyler have ever cared about me? How do we do with selfishness in today's society when we don't operate as one, when we act as separated individuals? I can't believe it. I'm actually befuddled by some of these comments. These are the same comments that put Tyler Walker into that scenario. These are the spike s comments, the disgusting spike of the racing world. 
the disgusting spike of the racing world. Un unbelievable. Unfucking believable. Go ahead, put your comments in there. Let's hear you. You, you, you want to hear me explain, but you don't want to listen. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, hold on just a second. I must, I must say that I enjoy this stream. Well, that's good that you enjoy the stream, but what I'm talking about is actually very serious. You people not taking it serious is going to lead me to a crack pipe in the front seat in Skid Row. I'm not saying that, but maybe so. Let the dude make a point. If you don't like what he has to say, don't watch. Thank you. Darius. Oh, whoa, whoa. We got a phone call coming in. Somehow somebody's got the number. Hello, who's on the line? What's up, Chaz? Oh, this is Clark. What's going on? How you doing, buddy? We we on are doing back on home soil, eh? We are on home soil. We are back to uh, America. You obviously have it better than us. You are in Canada. <laughs> hey, Spike is uh, on the line right dude, now saying I, I we're a bunch of gay fucks for having this point of view. Well, obviously, he doesn't even understand the fucking value that Tyler Walker brought to spring car racing, does he? That's what I'm saying. Like, where, like, right now, like, did he not drive for, for Mike Curb, Curb Records? Like, where, like, where's, where's Mike Curb? I, I don't know that for a fact, possibly. You know, like, like, oh, do you not see that? He, he drove he, for a lot of Curb cars. Records used to sponsor the first. He drove for a lot of people, yes. PA to California, Outlaws. Bro, that, hey. Did anybody watch did anybody watch that video that he posted on Facebook for God's sakes? Yeah. Dude, this guy's asking for help right now. Right. He wants to turn his shit around. Who's gonna help him? Do you not I, I feel like this when you're a the, guy like Tyler Walker, his honest um oh fix is gonna be back in a race car. I think that's what's gonna make it happen. I think in a race car is where Tyler Walker is going to find peace again. In a race car, or or or, call, or calling the races on the mic, we need some energy in the sport. Well, yeah, co-host co with Chase Rodman when it hurt, but no, they like, come on, guys. Like, where's Tony Stewart? You know, like like where are all these big guys? in the sport that say that they want to give back. This guy gave a lot to the sport. Maybe this is a consequence of some really nasty freaking wrecks before the Hans device. I don't know. Possibly. Possibly. You know? Maybe he's dealing with some maybe he's dealing with some CTE shit, right? We don't know. Junior say all this position. It's true. Could be possible. Like Somebody just you know, said, yeah, Chaz, you're the same. You're the, he said, you're the same guy who sends him money to feed his addiction. Listen to these people. These are the people that drive people to those dude, levels. Dude, Ch Ch Chaz, Chaz, racing is a, an addiction. Right, it is, yes. Once you take the racing away from the addict, they're going to go find something else. And, and here's another problem. Maybe these guys who think that he's feeding, you're feeding some fucking addiction. Maybe we have a culture issue with the sprint car world where, you know, look at fucking NASCAR. God is in the equation. Fucking in sprint car racing, it's, oh, let's crack a fucking beer. Let's have, oh, fuck, let's not, let's not have one beer. Let's have a six pack. Let's have a 12 pack. Well, a 24 pack and go to the next fucking race. A guy in the comments did just make a good Maybe point. Hold on. He said, no motherfuckers. He said, Tyler Walker didn't understand and appreciate the value, the value sprint car racing brought to him. His be he's his behavior no. cost him rides. Now he did have some, he did have some no. behavioral issues when he no. was in cars. Yes, he did. <clears throat> Correct. Yeah. 
Correct. But guess what? When you don't have a series that has your fucking back, when you don't have a fucking t-shirt trailer that you can sell motherfucking t-shirts left, right, and center like Kyle Larson or David Gravel, think about it. Well, Tyler he, Walker, he and, and I was saying time. it earlier with somebody on the phone, Tyler Walker was kind of the original team as before YouTube. If you think about it, like if Tyler Walker was around today, he would be close to team as as far as, you know, wildness and attitude and stuff like that. You know, he, he'd be team as on steroids. Right. All I'm saying, Chaz, is, you know, this, this is a time where Brad Sweet, David Gravel, all of the, you know, Donnie Schatz, all of these the guys racing step elites. up and say, the racing elite, the fan base, Brian Carter, wake the fuck up. Brad Sweet, wake the fuck up. Well, and that's a, you did say, you know, Kyle Larson, they, they, all they of did you it. Guys. He did get the, the outlaws pushed Tyler Walker pretty big. He was the rat bag car. We all raced World of Outlaws 2002 on PlayStation. You know, and he was like the guy. There was a significant push to make Tyler Walker a somebody. Um, and, and sometimes people don't appreciate what they have when they got it. You know, I'm sure we've all had, you know, in most normal lives, we've had a relationship or a girl or a person or a situation we didn't really appreciate. And then when it's gone, we regret losing it. We didn't treat it right. And then you go and some people like a Tyler Walker maybe went into a depression on how maybe he didn't appreciate, right? Self recognizes that, and, and instead of saying that, turns to where he's at today. Is that not a possibility? Anything is a possibility, Chad. All I'm saying is, in that video, all I saw was a man asking for help from the racing community, and we just want to sit back and bitch and moan. This guy gave a. This guy fucking. Did a lot racing. Put his life on the line. Yeah, he was a NASCAR bust because he put, a, he put his life on the line every single fucking night. In, in in a time where fucking it was really bad. The safety is definitely not to what it is today. So you're thinking we could be we could be dealing with a junior sayall situation. You never know, Chaz. He did take some rides. Does the racing community want to? Does the racing community want to put up, or do they want to shut up? What do they want to do? I agree. I agree. All right, Clark. We'll see who else is in here. I'm sure. I'm sure Spike wants to weigh in. Any messages for Spike if he calls? Spike. Still hasn't picked up his fucking children. He what? Dude, I've been I've been taking care of Spike's kids for like fucking six months. Really? So hasn't picked up his fucking kids from the daycare. Yeah. Wow. But wow. to call child services on this motherfucker, man. CPS coming for Spike. Although your your point about child. That was kind of my point is Tyler Walker is a child of the sprint car racing world. And in a way, the sprint car racing world should feel responsible for Tyler Walker. I think. They fucking use they fucking used them to what they needed and then they fucking got rid of them. Once he showed some attitude. Now, now Tyler fucking- Walker did show a lot of attitude. He did have some fuck you in him. That's what they, what, what what do you think a fucking outlaw is, Chaz? I understand. What the fuck is but an outlaw? he was unappreciative sometimes. No, 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 He was unappreciative sometimes. Isn't, is an outlaw Donnie Schatz? Yeah, but Donnie Schatz never said fuck you down the straightaway in pit areas of Williams Grove. But here's the thing. What do we have no fucking personalities in racing? This the the sprint car community doesn't even watch a fucking NASCAR race because everyone's fucking vanilla. 
Whoa. And then you have somebody that comes like a freaking Tyler Walker, stirs shit up, and fucking gets results. And then you have a little young little bitch like Buddy Kofoy can't even fucking lift a 100-pound weight over his head. But he's better than David Gravel, and you know it. Don't even get me started on this, Clark. Buddy Kofoy's a better driver than David Gravel. We know hey, you hey, understand oh, this, hey, right? Hang on, hang on, hang, hang, hang on. Hey, uh, look, Chaz. How many wins does Buddy have this, this year? It don't matter. Buddy Kofoid is no, your... I, no, I think, no, I think no. Buddy Kofoid will be your 2024 World Outlaw Champion. I said it here first. I bet you he won't even be with I the think year Buddy Kofoid's going to win the championship. That may be the Michelob Ultra speaking, but I think he's going to win the championship. Not a chance in hell, bro. He's fucking 100 points back. Are you on... Oh it's early God, in the season. We got 60 works. races left, son. He's finishing top three every night, no matter the track. He has no wins. No don't victories matter. in 2024. Brad Sweet could barely win. He won five straight. It's true. Consistency wins World Outlaw Championships. Not getting wrecked hey. because you're mad at Bell Baylog for coming down into you and blaming someone else. If yeah. If Buddy Kofoy doesn't 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 win the championship, TRD just fucking wasted a million bucks on trying to chase the world of LA. Okay, that's fine. All right, all right, all right, Clark. Is that all you got to say? What what what, what do you want to leave everyone else off with? We're about to open the lines. Brett Fisher call or, or send a, a super chat. We definitely appreciate that. Where where do you want to leave it? Spike wants to weigh in. Apparently, hey, Tyler Walker. He he gave a lot to the sport. I agree. And, you know, he did not, you know, he didn't win the championships like a Donnie Schatz, didn't have 300 victories like a Donnie Schatz. But you know what? You know, Brian Carter, World of Outlaws, they fucked that up. They they could have had, they could have had something big. I think and, Tyler Walker you know, did Rigsby, appreciate what Michael he had Rigsby, at the time. Yeah, but you know what? We don't know his whole fucking situation. Chad, we still need at, to li- at the same we, we, we still need to accept him. I think he, I think but, he is a responsible party of the dirt racing world. The dirt world is responsible to a certain extent, and that's why I'm saying Michael Rigsby, Brian Carter, Donnie Schatz, David Gravel, all like Kyle Larson, you guys, Tony Stewart, step the fuck up. Yes. That's it. I agree. All right. All right, Clark. Get the guy in a fucking, get the guy in a, get, get the guy in a fucking dirt late model. Do something with him. Something. Then what he is. Do something. I agree. Do something. And Spike can go fuck himself. I agree. Spike's going to have a bad opinion on this. A bad opinion. And he's going to be very mean. He can, he can go suck his midget dicks. All right. All right, Spike. Or uh, sorry, I did not mean to call you Spike. That's almost as bad as misgendering you. All right, Clark. Um, <laughs> okay, All right, later. All right, have All a good right. one, Chad. We'll try. So we are. We, we will open up the lines. That is the number right there: five one five two nine eight seven six nine one. If you can beat Spike to calling in, Spike is blowing my phone up. He's blowing the call chat in. Oh, he beat everyone to it. What? What? What do you want to say, you piece of shit, Spike? What? Do you really want to kill off your channel? <laughs> Listen to him. Don't don't come at me with that. What do you What do you want to say, Spike? I want to know what you, you got to say. Clark on. Shut up! Be I don't care about your opinions of Clark. All right, listen here, you jo- juice roided son of a bitch. What do you want to say? Uh, for everything that your little boyfriend, the Clark, said, I'm going to say the 100% opposite because that boy hasn't lived any life. <laughs> oh, God. He runs a daycare. His wife oh. makes the money. He's a little... The the most drugs he's ever done is sniff the kid's fucking dirty diaper. There's the phone number. So we'll, we're going to replace Spike is. very soon. That's the phone number. Save it in your phones. Once Spike gets off, be ready to call it. What, Spike? What do you want to say? Oh, did you see? The the, did is, you see the fucking crack pipe video or no? Yes, sir. 
Okay, you did see the fucking Tyler Walker crack pipe video. My point is, he, this is a responsibility of the dirt track world as to why Tyler Walker is on Skid Row of L.A. Have you been to Skid Row, Spike? I've been there. Yeah, I have. How did it go for you? I was in and out pretty quick. Pretty bad area. Uh, you just It depends who you're with. That's what it matters. I, I didn't care to be with anyone in that scenario. But anyways... Anyways, but he's definitely hitting rock bottom on life. Um, this has this has nothing to do with anything that the dirt racing world did to him. You understand? He, what? He's a talented guy. He was at the top of the mountain. And uh, the choices that he made caused him to start to fall off that mountain and make choices where he tried to climb a mountain on his own, such as drug dealing, running from the cops, et cetera, et cetera. How long ago did that happen, Spike? I'm about to look this up. Well, right. It, it was, it's been 10, 10 plus years, I'd say. Uh, five, five to, well, definitely over five years ago. We're looking it up right range, now. But, here's the, here's the, uh, 2014, December 23rd. Ten years ago, this happened. Yeah. Where uh, and some viewers sure. may not know what happened, but Tyler Walker went on a multi multi state. Um, he ran from the cops with a girl. Hopefully, not the same girl in the car from the video. Um, according to Auto Week, uh, Tyler Walker pled guilty. To two felonies and three misdemeanors from a high-speed chase that led cops from outside Las Vegas into Utah. He had postponed the court date for nearly two years. So this actually happened in 2012, if this story is correct. Mm -hmm. uh, Tyler Walker led police from three states on a high-speed chase before being stopped by oncoming traffic as he tried to exit the highway by going the wrong way on the entrance ramp. wonder where he learned how to drive like that. Probably P.A., after his arrest, police found a clear pipe with a bubble or a bulb end, white crystal substance on the bulb end, three plastic containers with hashes in them, multiple plastic containers of marijuana, and an open bottle of vodka. Walker was charged with evading possession of amphetamines, marijuana, and narcotic equipment, driving under the influence of drugs, open container, drinking in, the, in a public place, and a liquor license violation. He has since pled not guilty to all the charges. Uh, this was the actual story. Um, so this happened in 2012, Spike. This was 14 years ago. When do so the dirt world don't forgive this? Is what you're saying? We are. We don't forgive that. We forgive Kyle for saying the n word in two years, but we don't forgive this in fucking 14. Well, I'm, I'm, I. We have to establish the case first. So number one was this his first offense of any sort? felony was this first offense I'm pretty sure I mean outside he is the only sprint car driver I've seen on TMZ I don't know if you saw this he was on TMZ throwing a uh, uh, a flower pot I think they called him a NASCAR driver at the time but he was on TMZ right. yes right so the the urban legend of the time was that he was running drugs for who? Okay, so, you know, he was... Is this a Kading situation? A what you, for who? No, no, no. I'm just, I'm explaining to you what the the basic white man that listens to your show and, the, and in the stands of racing was told, you know, oh, yeah, you hear about Tyler Walker. You know, he was on a high-speed chase. You know, I guess he had a bunch of drugs. You know, he's drug dealing. Right. So right away, right, the, the the concept is is well, goddamn. I mean, Tyler Walker, he's freaking, he must be swinging hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of drugs. You know, he's a freaking high rolling businessman now. You know, crazy life for him, but goddamn, makes sense since he's a race car driver, just like the old uh, moonshiners back in the NASCAR era, right? You know, it's just it's a good story. It's pretty. Okay, makes sense. When in reality, it's like, no, 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 this dude is, he's under the influence. 
He's, he's doing drug drugs. He's, he's got, got a girl. He's got a corporate. woman. You know, every both times he had a woman, I believe. Yeah, and you, you know why you have a woman with you when you're when you're a drug addict? She's usually the one doing the drugs with you, influencing. No, she's 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 a hooker. I didn't draw that conclusion, but she's you would, funny. Spike. You fucking would. You, 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 what the fuck is, is he going to go work at McDonald's to make this money? The barista in Australia, like you talk about? No, she's work. She he you get her hooked on drugs. So she does the tricks, makes the money, so you both can get your fix. What you know how the system works more than Tyler Walker, apparently. You're not I know you're not more doing than crack most on Facebook. Know about a lot of shit. Why is so he I'm doing crack you know. on Facebook, Spike? Tell us. Well, you gotta understand, there's He's gone. There's a lot of um He's there's rock a bottom. lot of ego. There's a lot of ego. You're never gonna say I need help. But you're going to say, look at where I am. Right. I'm going to show you how bad I've gotten. Right. Okay. And let me just, let me just be real here. This isn't going to be the first time this is going to happen as the fame of dirt racing as as much as you guys want it to become as big as NASCAR and F1 and all this. If it ever got to that point, you're going to have guys that are drug addicts. They're going to be uh, alcoholics. You're <laughs> Some big issues, this. yeah. They won't be able to handle real fame. And with the realm of these young men and women being groomed from age four inside of a go-kart, being taught how to be a professional race car driver, and suddenly you're going to get to the age of 30, and Mr. Car Owner might say, you're too old. You're too slow. Then what? Then you're Tyler Walker. Yeah, or or it could even just be uh, what happened to some of these young NASCAR guys 10, 15 years ago. The sport exploded. They created a, a system where you could basically go to a little driving school. Mommy and daddy were rich. You got into it, and next thing you know, these young men were getting drunk driving. They were getting caught with drugs. They were overdosed and they were getting caught. They maybe roughed up their old lady. And within 20, within 20 something, age 20 something, under age of 30, NASCAR banned them for life. And most of them killed themselves or OD'd I, or I, are in prison. That is who? What's your examples when you say that? There's many of them. Go through the list. Uh, who, the one, who killed themselves? The one, the First one of all, you say to, killed themselves. The one, NASCAR, the one NASCAR kid went to go, went and killed his ex-girlfriend and himself. Who? Within a few years ago. I don't remember their name. Okay. Okay. Now, who else? They're all, they all, they all, they all, they all, they all got, they all sound the same to me after a while. Well, I am but suspicious the fact that, that you know, uh, of them. most people who know, I mean, there was a situation after St. Louis with Clint Boyer where he ran over a girl. I don't know if you heard about that. You know, apparently yeah, it was, was her fault. I didn't say yeah. that. You said that, Spike. I didn't say that he did, was under intoxication or anything, but he did run over a person and they died and it was apparently the person's fault. But... Yeah, it, and you, but yeah, this is Missouri, I believe it was, correct? Yes, yeah, yeah I believe so. Uh, so yeah, there's there's always going to be a hierarchy of who's the real problem in the scenario, and the crack the crack whore walking into traffic is always going to be to blame. Yeah, the, the the back to the nepotism, the monarchy, the the kings and queens of the scenario. I mean, Clint Boyer could have been sober as the day is long, which they determined toxicology that he wasn't under the influence. Um, but he could have been drunk off his ass. The crack whore will be the one to blame. Right. Peasants because and there's kings. There's a hierarchy of what's wrong. Peasants and, and kings. And drugs are more wrong than alcohol. So. Peasants and kings. This is true. All right. Do you have anything else to say? Somebody's asking. No, the hold on, hold on. Is, Somebody is asking. This is a great point. I want to make this point right now, Spike. Somebody's asking, 
Can the Race for Rudine Foundation help Tyler Walker? Yes. Tyler Walker sure. in the, so in the Race for Rudine race car, I think Tyler Walker could still drive. I think that's what will save Tyler let Walker's life is driving a race car, a sprint car again. You, you, you all are, y'all are going a hundred steps ahead of the point here. And this is where I like to, I like to, I like to build upon a foundation here. Unlike the Clark who goes on his little emo faggot tirade. So let me <laughs> not use something. that language, but you continue. Wow. So anyways, the point is at some point, the addict will go back to where he knows there's a population of people that know him slash could care about him. Appreciate him. That's a person. Yeah, care about him. Yeah. Celebrate him. So the moral Worship of the story him. Is, That's what the dirt world treated him as. As what? As a fucking celebrity. As above them. Yeah, so here's the point. He's hit rock bottom. He's cracked out. He's He's got a chick passed out in the seat. His car is destroyed. Everything he owns is in it. He's admitting he's on skid roll. Whether he's there or not is irrelevant. The point of the matter is, I would not be surprised that at some point he will show up at a racetrack. Because that'll be his last ditch effort to be seen as if someone's going to give a fuck. You think NASCAR fucked his head up? That he deserved to be bigger than dirt? No, this this is all... The, everyone, everyone comes into this with a choice to make, and I think that um, a lot of times the, the people that have an addictive nature, especially those that uh, have a need for a high in life, they're going to go to the next high. They're all seeking that. Well, but... Crack and drugs is the same high. It's just easily accessible. So you're saying he went to that to get that easily accessible high that the same thing the dirt world could provide? I think that that racing is just there's there's always the the sport or the profession you're in. It's the appreciation. It's that acknowledgement of who you are, your 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 persona. People loving you for yeah, you. Two different, two different animals. The, the high, the high of person and versus the high of of stimulants is two different things. So, all right, we had a good comment here. I want to read it. Uh, somebody said right. T.W. was a great driver in his prime. Then he threw it away several times. It's sad to see, but I have no sympathy. There are actually good people and military veterans that deserve all your help. I I would assume at the end he wants to say not Tyler Walker. Well, and that's what I'm getting at is everyone has a choice to make. And Tyler Walker during his lifestyle in racing probably was partying. I doubt that he was clean as a whistle. And obviously certain choices along the way, it it kept compounding. And all I'm saying is it wouldn't surprise me if he shows up into common territories that he's used to. Uh, You know, obviously, if friends and family don't really want anything to do with him, he'll probably return to the profession that he was known for. And at that point, is is the drivers that he raced with in that era that are still on the rosters, if he goes up to them, are they going to say, hey, Tyler, um, hang out after the event. I want to have a talk with you, you know, and then, and then offer him something. It's not that they have to, it's not like the Clark when he was going on his, his, you know, feminine tirade that he feels that the ownership groups of racing are to blame for this man's decision to become a crack addict. No, (laughs) what I'm saying is, is if, is if I went up to, let's say, Let's say if, if you 10 years down the road have not seen me and I showed up at a track 10 years later and I'm a crack addict, don't you think that you'd say, hey, man, I think we should get you help? It, it, okay, so if, if you were a race team in Pennsylvania, California, Midwest, 
and you had a situation where you could bring Tyler Walker in and, and kind of get him off of it, give him a race car to fuck with every day, and then, hey, in a couple weeks or a month, we'll put you in a car. You wouldn't offer that to Tyler Walker? Don't you think that's the best rehab plan for a Tyler Walker where he's at right now is a situation where he could come in, get into racing again, get away from the lifestyle. I'm sure he's recognizing, like you're saying, he's at bottom, you know. Do you think that a situation in racing where you could put him in a scenario where he's off of it, dealing with the car, and could potentially race again is his best rehab solution to a normal life again? Because he still has that ability. Well, if you being from the hood should know better. No, that's not true. I do not see it that because way. I see. I, I no, like no, 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 no. I see Tyler Walker as a guy who was used to being Superman, and then once Superman mm-hmm. went away, he didn't know how to feel like Superman again until he got on the pipe. And the Superman you, feeling no, is in dirt understand. racing. The Superman feeling is being a dirt racing superstar. And he thought he could be more than that. And he found out the hard way, obviously a long ways down the road. He found out the hard way that no, maybe you were put on this planet to be a sprint car driver and be that superstar and that Superman. That's what I feel like. I feel like he tried to replace it. You're missing, you're missing all the variables in between. He's, he's a crack addict, homeless in a car with a hooker. What was he before that though? That wasn't what he always was. This isn't. This isn't. You know, you talking about when he was winning at Port Royal and Kings Royals and all this shit. He wasn't doing cracking cars with girls. He probably was snorting coke. Well, that's normal in this society, or Adderall. But yeah, that's a way different than being unemployed, homeless in a car with a hooker, and and being near death. So you're saying to me, well, why don't a team just give him a job and then after a week or two, put him in a car? A month. I said a month. Fuck you. Okay, whatever. A month is four weeks. A weekly weekly kind of car. Fuck a 305 something. That's the cutest little white man thought I've ever heard in my life. It is cute. It is nice. I'm being nice and sympathetic to Tyler Walker. You are not, sir. I'm just being real with you. When you employ a strung out drug addict, you put him in that race shop and you guys go, here, here's the deal. Hey, Chaz race team, we're going to, you know, let's say you got a, a motorsports team and a big fucking warehouse with cars and tools and everything and the cash and whatnot. And everybody's there, already and doing guys, cocaine and banging other people's wives and, and, and sunshine and no, sun No, no, you're missing yeah. the point. Listen, calm down, Callum. No, no, fuck you. Don't you say that. You keep going. Don't. I'm not getting on that subject. So here's the deal. Here's the fact. You guys, you and your little Chaz race team, go down to McDonald's, get your little happy meals, and in an hour, the place will be fucking empty. Why? What? That don't make no sense. What are you talking about? Because he's a fucking crack addict and he needs his hit. And they, all those items are money. But the hit is in the race car. No, it isn't. You've missed the point. There is no better hit. How do you know drugs. this? Why the fuck do you think people get addicted to him and lose their families? Their I, I don't necessarily think that Tyler Walker... Got a, got a hit, and it's bigger than everything else. I'm looking at it in, in a reverse engineering way. I'm looking at it as fucking he was on a plateau of a high in the dirt racing world, and then when that went away, he was used to a certain high and replaced it with the crack cocaine. Well, that would mean that every retired musician or every retired race car driver would eventually be a crack at it. A lot of the the ones on the Tyler level, uh, uh, you got to understand, Tyler Tyler Walker was that big. He wasn't a bitch. He wasn't local down at your PA track. 
He was winning Kings Royals. He was the rat bag car in the rat bag game. He was in NASCAR. I hate to say it. He was there. He was mm -hmm. portrayed as this big fucking thing. That has to give you a pretty big fucking high. I experienced some pretty big highs being, you know, in shit with Larson and fucking put here and there and all that. I've experienced some highs, so I know what he's talking about. I don't turn to drugs try to get to it. I just keep on going. But I'm saying you feel a certain... I can only imagine how Tyler Walker felt. I never felt that way. If you get to that level of high... Personally, just Dennis normalcy. Dennis if Dennis that's Dennis normal, Dennis you have to replace it with something. And I feel like you could Dennis replace it with drugs, obviously. I've never done Dennis crack cocaine. End? What? Didn't his career end? In his mind, how do we know if he thought his career ended? Every time he so told a guy, fuck off, he found another ride. And eventually the rides what ran out. And when the rides what ran out, career? when the rides ran out, that's when we started seeing this fucking drug Tyler Walker. Because the high went away. Maybe the guy that's telling everyone to fuck off is drugged up. I mean... I mean... If you want to support the girls, you know, wearing their scandally dresses on PA's fucking, you know, Facebook racing scene, I mean, that's where you're going to end up. I have no clue what you're even talking about with that's that. That's good. But... I'm just Are saying. You talking about Nicole or not? I'm no, I'm not talking but, uh... about Nicole. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not talking, talking about, about Nicole. And, uh, Why do you keep Elliott bringing this up? Wow, what is this threesome you want us to have? Shut up. It's not real. <laughs> It's no, not the fact real. of the matter is, you, everyone in your comments, the ones that I've glanced at, are are logical. Because we all work for a living, and we all know that there's repercussions for actions, and we make money, and we have to follow a standard of life. I don't give a fuck if you're a rock star race car driver, or you're the burger flipper. Or you're the man working at the factory or the mill. What if you're all three like me? No comment. But so the fact of the matter is, we all got to make a decision in life. And sometimes drug addiction can supersede all other aspects of life, from employment to family to friends to health, wellness, and lifestyle. It can just overcome you. So and when Tyler Walker because... calls in tomorrow, what do you want to say? The dirt world owes you want me to tell him, hey, the dirt world owes you nothing. Fuck you. Go smoke your pipe, bitch. Is that what you want me to say? Because that sounds like what you want me to say. No, I would say all I'm saying is No. This is the point I was trying to get to before you went on. Uh, no, no, your, that sounds like what you're trying to say. Fuck you. You're saying to Tyler Walker, fuck you and your problems. You gotta deal with them like all of us. No, your solution was have them come mop the shop and then let him drive a car in a month. Give him That's some kind of plan back idea. to where he was once on the high of natural life. A living That's the high. That's fucking idea I've ever heard. So no, let me tell it's you real. You've never been that big, Spike. I get it. I've been close. There's a real natural high to being <laughs> important in okay. life. You've never Listen. been important, Spike. I have been kind of important. It is cool. Okay, it is a high. Incredible. It is a high Listen, to be I'll cool. Disagree. I'm just saying, we'll I think winning the cup fucking Kings Royal is pretty high. I think it's right, pretty high. So he's a way bigger deal than we are, and we're not crack addicts. I think winning the Kings Royal, being this shit fucking kicker, kicking everyone's ass, is, is just as big or just as much of a high as smoking crack. Yes. Have you smoked crack? No, I just have an idea. I'm thinking. You know, okay, you're not well, thinking. You're being unsympathetic. And, 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 and you're being and you're being very disrespectful to the feelings of Tyler Walker. Why don't you care, You're being Spike? disrespectful of knowing what it's like to be a fucking crack addict. Okay, well, that's you know not... That you know that fuckers cannot live without it? Like, they cannot live without it. It's an addictive drug because... But it gives you a feeling, correct? It. it gives you a feeling, a sensation. Most people I've talked to who've done cocaine or crack, which crack is a watered-down baking soda, you know, spinach, whatever. I've sold it, but I ain't done it. 
It's apparently a feeling like cocaine. It's a cheaper feeling where your doubts, your worries go away. You feel more uh, secure with yourself. Your insecurities go to the south. You don't worry about what's wrong with you. You're only worried about what's good in life. Everything's so great. Nothing's wrong. I feel like when you're a superstar sprint car driver winning King's Royals and whooping everyone's ass and fucking everyone's old lady, you feel very similar to that. Spike, that's all I'm saying. No, that's not even that's not even accurate. I that mean, I mean, I don't a, know. I don't know. Like I said, I'm only I'm only reading. Well, you're messages. making you're, you're talking like it's weed or something. No, you know? like weed. It's, it's complete, I don't think weed makes you feel that way. But continue. You just described fucking weed. Listen, no, Hillbilly. I did not. That's a lie. Just listen to the man that's lived a life a little longer than you. No, just because so you've done cocaine that, and fucked all your whores doesn't mean shit. All right, bitch. I'm telling you. What the girls who have cheated on me doing cocaine have told me. It makes them not worry about nothing. They're not insecure. I'm not to do with cocaine. They, I'm talking about crack. So you've experienced. Addict. Okay, okay. So you've been a crack addict, Spike. Explain. I've known many of a crack oh, addict. Oh, I just told you I've known you some people, know. but you're saying that's bullshit. So I'm telling you, your rehab process of making them mop the floor and putting them in a car and it's all race cars fault. I didn't the, say mop a floor. Thing. You, you, you took my statement my and spun it that way, you narcissist. And that's why you're sitting there talking shit because your little boy finished six in a pack of 14 Callum cars. Callum Williamson's going to whoop North PA North. ass. Fuck you, all right? So here's the fact. <laughs> Before I... Uh, I can't believe this is happening. Oh, uh, we, we 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 lost twenty viewers bringing up Callum. Continue. No, that was the Clark. Uh, that was the Clark. That but was Clark. Okay. Here's the fact. That that little girl in the chat's getting offended by you, Chaz. Addison. But, uh, oh, he's getting. She's getting offended by you because you're in, you you are insensitive to people. We need Addison to call yeah, well, in. That's what we need. Addison's response. You need to call in, Addison. Next. There's the number. The Continue, fact is, is, I could have summed up everything in five minutes, but you have to interrupt me. And no, go you're, you're insensitive, you're and drunk. I challenge your You're drunk off your fucking ass. You're drunk off your ass on light beer, which is a fucking disgrace to manhood in the first place. But the second thing, this is a fact. If the, the This is the bridge that y'all got to cross. If a guy like a Tyler Walker or in, in future years when all these young five-year-olds that they're grooming – to become race car drivers have no other option and then they get their ass canned and they have nothing else and they turn to drugs or alcohol what's the plan you, you and, have to bring our, them back. Our... no you don't you don't have to do shit for them but the fact of the matter is the tyler walker shows up at the racetrack and says hey uh I, I need some help here your plan of having them mop the floor and drive a car in a month is bullshit that's the dumbest idea you know what's the dumbest I did, Spike? Me talking to you. Fuck off. All right, we just put the end button on Spike. This motherfucker, I can't handle it. 515-298-7691. We've had some missed calls. Who's next? Spike will never call in again. I feel like that's good. All right, we got an unknown number. Oh, shit, this could be bad. Hello, you are on the show. I'm, I'm scared. Who is this? Yo, it's uh, this is Brian Uber. No, this is not um, uh, Addison. Ad- I was expecting Addison. To- Addison's pissed off, Brian. What? What was that? Addison, the the female commenter. Uh, she's mad. Yeah, she's pretty mad. I would be too. She's got a pretty big nose on her. Oh wow! <laughs> I did not say this. All right. So, what did you want to say, Brian? We'll try to keep you under ten minutes or five or something like that. What? I just wanted to uh, talk about the Tyler deal with his racing, and uh, okay, the you're, you're wrong on the fact of racing went away and he had to replace it with something. He was he was already doing all that. Like the other guy was right on the fact of he's doing drugs and racing and the Kings Royal and all that. Winning those races is cool and all, but he did it because he enjoyed racing and then enjoyed getting high afterwards. So you're saying you have facts that he was getting high every night after racing. He's a race car driver, and look look at how he was and how he acted. That guy partied after every single race and right. enjoyed his life, and then he got addicted to cocaine probably, 
and ruined it because he got on all that and his attitude, he started being an asshole and pissing people off, losing rides, losing sponsors. And then it led to this. He had nothing left and crack is a lot cheaper than cocaine. Okay. Well, and it's the same thing, but baking soda. So um, when did he, uh, I'm actually looking, Tyler Walker to NASCAR. When did that happen? I would say he was getting hooked on cocaine and all that right before NASCAR. And then he was doing so good. He got into NASCAR. He's making a little more money. And then that led to uh, Hold on. We're trying to see the dates on this. It looks like 2004 he went to NASCAR. Five seven. Uh seven twelve. Just trying to see here. Looks like his last NASCAR race was two thousand and seven. So he was he was back in the dirt, uh far and beyond after he uh had all these issues. So he lost his NASCAR stuff, come back to the dirt world and ends up you know, back in his same path of winning dirt races and partying and doing drugs with all the same guys he grew up doing it with. And then he fucked it off big time, got busted dealing drugs, trying to make more money and have fun. And now he's where he's at now. And he just fucked. You're saying it's over. What? Where, where does Tyler Walker yeah, go he- from here? Uh, if he's lucky, he gets clean, but he's already tried it once. And then he, ended he up said he's going live tomorrow at that. Skid Row. Yeah. The show is where he lives and what he deals with. Right. This. Where he lives now in the, in the drug doing capital of the world, Skid Row. I went there. I was there. Yeah, I, w- I was living on my car on Hollywood Boulevard at the time, but I went to Skid Row just to see it. And I walked in and walked out. It's pretty fucking rough. I bet it is. I seen how scared you were at Gold Cup getting yelled hey, at. Hey, fuck you. Fuck. Hey, that wasn't that scary. That was just uh, very abrupt. You know, <laughs> I didn't see it coming. I was sitting there chilling, <laughs> having fun with some friends, and then all of a sudden there's three guys, four guys on me talking about I'm going to whoop your ass, you know. So that was a little, that was a little Whoa, out of it nowhere. Was, it was out of nowhere, all right? It was. It was one guy. It was a hundred. No, no, no. There was four. There was four guys. There was four guys. Were you there? Because there was four guys. I was the one screaming at you. (laughs) Well, then, you know, there was four people there. (laughs) Listen, I was pretty fucked up. And I know the only other people standing there were watching me do the screaming. Well, then you were wrong because there was four fucking guys. There was one screaming and the three guys behind him. And, and then the girls got involved. Did you notice? Did you notice that, that in that situation at the Gold Cup, women came in there are and defended thinking, me? Are you thinking? I think year, I'm pretty. Yes. Are you thinking this year? Because I'm talking about. I'm talking ago, about the video where the women, where, where the guy approached me with the phone. Fo- fo- he's all they're, they're, they. You know, they were still mad at the Ashton Torgerson deal from the Chili Bowl. That's what blew my mind. Uh, I was like, "What's going on?" That that part wasn't even me. I was the guy at the fucking bikini contest screaming at you. Well, see, that was a whole... I was an hour later when this occurred. You don't even know what you're talking about. Yeah, that part's not me. That right. part was not me. Okay, well, an hour later at the fucking concert, out. after the fucking whores got off the stage... No, I'm just playing. After the scandalous dressed women got off the stage, that's when all this went down. And that was three, well, four guys. One guy screaming, three guys behind him. And then the women stepped in because they saw I was attractive and they wanted to defend me. That's what I think. That's what I tell myself, at least. Yeah, that's what I tell myself. Well, the one girl tried to hook up with me later, and I, I was in a relationship at the time, and I and I sent her the screenshots and the snaps, and it was a big fucking ordeal the next day, actually. I have a, I have a lot of respect for the one girl because she it could have been a big deal the next day, but... Are you done, Brian? I'll let you get on your next call. Okay. Yeah, I'm over it. It it got really boring. So he's going he's going to hell. Tyler Walker goes to hell and that's all that matters. I wouldn't say he's going to hell, you know. I feel bad for the guy to a point. Skid Row's pretty close to to himself. Oh, he he hung.
hung up. Fucking bitches. All right. Lines open. 515-298. Addison, everyone's wanting you to call in. They want a female opinion on this Tyler Walker scenario. We Do we need to sing a song for Addison to call in? Is that what needs to happen? Do we need to like... All right. Lines open, 515-298-7691. We're waiting for the next caller. We got calls open. Oh, my God. Is someone about to call? It could happen. It could happen anytime. We're waiting. Oh, we're waiting here. Lines are open. Oh, my. We're getting texted. We got the number on the screen. Spike is no one wants to debate you. I defended him. Look at these. Look at these comments. From Spike. Look, look, look. The people defended me by Clark, you cunt. Wow. Your show is dead. You're a drunk. Nobody wants to debate your drunk ass. I, I mean, I was sitting, I, I feel like I'm being very rational here right now. Play us a song. Oh, God. I'm not playing us a song at Tyler Walker deal. I'm not doing it. All right. If we need to get off here, we can. If no one wants to call, 515-298-7691. It's a very relatively easy phone number to call. It's not very hard. Let's see here. Lines are open. There was somebody from the 661 who tried to call, and and we missed his call. Oh, not happening. Well, I mean, if no one wants to call, we will sit here and just uh, chat it up. Play us a song. (laughs) Obviously, I'm a little under the weather. I just couldn't believe what I saw on Facebook tonight. I had to go live. I I didn't plan on going live because I was still kind of a little under the weather, as said. Um... If someone wants to call in and talk about it, everyone wants to hear from this Addison person. I don't know why. Uh, I don't know. Who's Addison? Who is it? Addison Wow Hubert? What does it say? Wow Hubert? What did she say? What did she say? It was so bad. Get this dude off the phone. I think she was talking to Spike at that time. Oh, shit. We all deal with this on Snapchat. Message retracted. Oh, my God. Wow, this is bad. This is bad. This is horrible. Okay, I guess we could... I guess we could end it there. It is 11.59. It is midnight. I didn't want this to be a fuck Tyler Walker episode as much as everybody wants it to be. Uh, y'all, y'all are very cruel people. We do have the number open. We'll give it a couple minutes. I really didn't plan on everybody to be like, fuck Tyler Walker and he can go to hell. Um, but I guess y'all are professional gaslighters. I guess that's what's going on here. Um, I didn't plan on it being that way, but it seems like that, that, that's what Spike was. Definitely a professional gaslighter. Uh, I didn't see it that way. But, uh, hold on, we got some more comments coming in. Crazy how bad he looks. You need to get Joey Bats, give you history on Tyler Walker, that would be bad. The only ride anyone's going to put TW in at this rate is Harris, or Heresy? I believe that's what he means. Oh my god, hello. Okay, we got a caller coming in. All right, all right, what's going on? This is Garrett from Indiana. Okay, Indiana. So you got an opinion on this. You saw the video? Uh, uh, No, I didn't watch the video, but I've heard quite a bit about Tyler Walker. Yes. Back in his day. What did you hear? I know he was running. Oh, I got video VHS tapes and DVDs of him running at Paris and the early Oval Nationals. Back in the day, okay. I know his dad ran, and 
he wasn't very good. Or he crashed a lot. But um, I'm kind of curious what you think about the whole Bobby East incident that happened, what, two years ago? Fill me in. Yeah, what do you think about Bobby East? That whole incident that went down where... Because I think that was a drug deal. What do you mean? No, I didn't hear it, actually. You didn't hear about this Tyler Walker deal? I didn't hear about this Bobby East thing. So what do you mean? Yeah, he... Well, he died on some meeting or something like that at a gas station, I thought. You're thinking that was a drug deal? It seems like it. The guy who killed him, it, it, he was a drug dealer himself, and he, he when the cops showed up at his house, they, he got in a full shootout with them, and he got killed. Wow, that sounds so pretty bad. I heard, yeah, because I, from what I heard, like East, he was on the streets for years. Because after, because I think like one of the last races is like 2010, 2011. Or something like that. It was like, because he would run USAC. He right. ran NASCAR for a couple of years. And I, I don't know. He was in, I think, Bennick's car out in Indiana with like USAC and Silver Crown and shit like that. And then he, I don't know exactly. I heard he got like a bunch of concussions as well from crashing a bunch. And he just wasn't all there. And it, it just, it kind of reminds me. From what I heard, I don't know with the Bobby East incident if it was actually a, a drug deal or what went down. I know he got killed at a gas station. Just right there. I don't know. Plain sight, Somebody in the comments said Bobby East was a drug deal. It was a drug deal? That's what somebody said. I don't know. I, don't, I, I can't say 100% because I, I wasn't there. I don't. I, I've met Bobby's before in the past, but it was a swap meet back in the day in Indiana because that's where I'm from. They had a big swap meet in like January at the fairgrounds. Met him once and Bobby East before I was a kid at the time and I don't know them really that well, but from what I heard, because he, I, I read a uh, Sprint Car and Midget magazine and um, they said something about like he had been on the streets. What was it? Since like 2010 or something like that, like right after and somewhere because it was talking about uh, Bobby, it's his father. He was talking about it on the on the magazine that I was reading this whole interview, and um, I guess the last time he saw his son or something like that was uh, Turkey Night. Wow. And. Um, uh, that's just what I read from the magazine. So whatever I, I, because when, when I heard it, and this was like about a month later. Wow. And that's about, that was about it. But it, it just it kind of reminds me, like that was another person who, like, ho- hopefully that doesn't happen to Tyre Walker. I'm trying to com- hope it would never have to compare that to. Well, I mean, Tyre he is Walker, on Skid you know, Row. Like, that's a pretty bad area. Right. Yeah. And. I mean, it's dangerous. I mean, it, it, he's lucky that he hasn't been killed yet if he's doing drug deals and pimping and shit like that. So right. it's not a, it, I feel bad. I mean, I, I've heard um, with like the drugs that are out around in the early 2000s were fucking gnarly. Like Supercross, I don't know if you heard the stories that went down in the AMA. Oh my God! There's so many kids who got fucked up on drugs. Austin Stroop, Jason Lawrence. I don't know if you know these names. Hanson. There are a bunch of guys who used to race back in the day, and they all got screwed up on the drugs that were coming out from the pharmacies and the underground drug scene, and whatever they had in those drugs, it was it fucked up a lot of kids from what I've seen. In multiple sports, not just racing, but in any sport, from what I've heard. So, and Tyre Walker was a part of that era where 
It was early 2000s. Well, I'm sure that that Supercross era was crazy when it was booming. Oh, yeah, because you had Carmichael and Reed and um, and people before that even, like uh, Jeremy McGrath. And so, yeah, I mean, it was right at the time where, like, the Supercross racers, they were kind of like – because Carmichael came in and completely changed it with the whole training thing and that it was – it went from partying at Lake Havasu and all that stuff to uh, you got to be in the gym all the time in order to be the best. So it kind of threw out that whole rock star mentality thing that uh, went down. And um, it kind of, the, the whole drug thing really took out a lot of those kids who were trying to, thought that, you know, the, I don't know if you've seen like a uh, crusty demons of dirt, that whole like freestyle thing it was kind of, they were living that sort of life and um, they couldn't really do it. And then it seemed like a lot of whatever the drugs that were coming out, that it, it took care of most of the ones that weren't as dedicated. Right. Okay. But um, yeah, it's just, that's trying to put comparisons to like kind of maybe how this happened and just, and I, that's probably, plenty of more names in the racing world that that went down but um yeah um i enjoy your show i like the topics okay. you come up with well we try we try well everybody wants to hear this addison so we're gonna we're gonna make sure we get addison on the line they want to hear a female opinion i'm, I'm sure everybody's listening to this Oh, they want to hear that soft voice. Oh, uh, they want to hear that the blonde. Soft yes. It, it, it's, it's probably it's not even a woman. It's probably a male. It's like Caitlin Clark. I think it's a woman, but it's not. It, it's probably a. It's probably her boyfriend. He's using her right. music or something like that. Exactly. <laughs> if I don't hear a female voice in the next one after you, I'm hanging up. All right. Maybe it'll probably be Spike or uh, Clark. <laughs> That's <laughs> true. Well, thank you for calling. You you mixed it up. We were about to end the show. Yep, no problem. All right, thank you, sir. All right, take care. Show me what you want. All the her, all the tears, sweat and pain, all the days sitting in the shop for when the cold are hot. I take it and I talk about another race. And listen, please, best believe all the things I see in the bickering ring of the shit you preach and the hating on me for everything I've done. Trying to break my focus, you don't know about the tribe. Not this on the trap, but late into the night. Spiking all this fuel and doping all these ties Not to break the rules but just to bend those lines And if you call me out I'm coming straight up